it's always very challenging to be the speaker right after lunch. <laughs> and it's even more challenging to be speaking after two very interesting presentations that we have just had just before lunch. Now, it is indeed a privilege to be able to speak at this symposium, honouring Li Peng Yi, a man for whom I have the deepest respect. I understand that actually someone else was supposed to be giving this keynote. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it, and unfortunately, I happened to be walking along the corridor when I met Li An Ho, <laughs> and then I, I became the next available replacement. So I'm just a substitute. Uh, so I asked uh, Ngan Ho, um, if you want me to speak, what do you want me to talk about? And he literally told me, anything, anything you like. So that means that technically, I can be talking about World Cup football. <laughs> but I think I'll stick to the, the theme of the uh, day and talk about a little bit about mathematical modeling. Now, the title of my talk is Experiencing Teaching and Learning Mathematical Modeling. But before I start, uh, I'd like to do something a little bit um, lighthearted. This is so that uh, we're all not so tense. Actually, it's more for my benefit because I'm quite tense. What is this? Anyone? Very good, Eiffel Tower. What did I hear? Big Ben. <laughs> no prizes for the right answer here. Now, the next one is very hard. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Singapore flyer. So these were the four things you saw, right? And you told me that it's the Eiffel Tower, the Big Ben, Sydney Opera House, and the Singapore Flyer. Well, you're all wrong. Yes, they are just representations of the real thing, right? They're not the real thing. So, in other words, they are actually models in some sense, right? So my point here is that <coughs> the use of models, representations, and idealizations of reality is at, to, to enhance understanding and for the purpose of communication um, is actually very common and it comes very naturally, naturally to all of us. So everyone has some kind of innate ability to model, just like everyone has some kind of ability to count. Even pigeons can count, right? <laughs> now, uh, <clears throat> so this is the um, um, the kind of understanding that we have, that we are all in some way able to model. So it doesn't matter what age you are, you have some sense of modeling in you. Let's get back to the uh, topic of my talk. Now, uh, so I was asked to give this talk, so this is the outline of my talk. <laughs> but <laughs> I realized that would not be good, so I, I think I have to put something in between. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm going to share with you some personal experience of mine in terms of modeling as a student, as a learner. Um, so you see, just now you, you heard from uh, uh, three boys from the primary school, followed by three girls from the secondary school. Now you're going to hear a modeling experience from someone much older uh, in, 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 a, in a topic which is uh, less interesting, perhaps. Now. Uh, <clears throat> And hopefully, um, after describing the personal experience in modeling as a student, um, I can draw, or we can all draw some insights into how one might be able to model that kind of experience in a classroom in terms of uh, providing some kind of learning and teaching experience. And um, we'll, I hope to be able to discuss uh, something about teaching and learning of modeling and learning experiences for modeling. Now, some researchers have proposed that mathematical modeling should be caught rather than taught. And the best way we can catch something is by experiencing it, and experiencing the process. So uh, <clears throat> I'll try to discuss uh, how we can teach as well as experience mathematical modeling within the classroom situation. And then I'll conclude my talk with a couple of simple messages for local school teachers. Now, uh, so this talk is not, 
not about what is mathematical modeling. It's not about the whys and the what's of mathematical modeling because I think this has been discussed by the other speakers and um, <clears throat> we have already talked about that for a long time. And also, this is not a talk about uh, reporting some research finding because I have no such research findings to report. <laughs> All right? So, <clears throat> so this talk is about a personal experience. And hopefully by sharing this experience, I hope to explain some of the processes involved in mathematical modeling from the point of view of a student, although a rather old one. Um, and, and then we can see how, hopefully, we can um, <clears throat> model the kind of experience in a classroom. At the end of it, if we can all feel a little bit confident about uh, what we can do in the classroom in terms of mathematical modeling, in terms of uh, teaching and learning and providing the kind of experiences for our students in the classroom. And I think if we can be a little bit more confident, I think I have achieved uh, the objective of this uh, talk. So, <clears throat> let me begin by uh, <clears throat> perhaps uh, <clears throat> drawing some highlights to my own experience in terms of modeling. I started my mathematical modeling journey not too long ago, only 25 years ago. <laughs> and here are some highlights of the journey. Now, it all began with a project on blood flow through arteries. That project, in that project, I had to model um, non-Newtonian flow through elastic arteries. And <clears throat> that kind of kindled my interest in mathematical modeling in biological systems. Later on, I moved on to uh, looking at blood flow through an artery with a stenosis. Stenosis is just a narrowing <coughs> within an artery. And I had to use the um, computational fluid uh, dynamics uh, or CFD uh, theories and uh, venturing into modeling 3D uh, flows in 3D and flow through a tube that is bent with a stenosis. And that happened to be my PhD uh, topic. In 1997-98, um, Singapore experienced a sharp peak in dengue outbreaks, dengue fever. So I worked on modeling of dengue fever under a joint grant with, uh, at that time it was called Ministry of the Environment. Now it's called NEA, National Environment Agency. And <clears throat> later on, I went on to study traffic flow. I think this was mentioned by uh, the earlier presentation. Now, actually, if you look at um, traffic flow, it's not too different from blood flow, right? Uh, if you imagine the vehicles to be like um, the blood cells in blood, and the roads are like your blood vessels, and the road network is like the circulatory system. So the traffic flow system is not too different from um, uh, blood flow. So I haven't quite ventured out of blood flow from there, yeah? Now, in 2003, following the SARS epidemic in Singapore, I proposed a simple model to explain the outbreak. And then later on, I moved on to modeling of avascular tumor uh, growth together with a master's student. I think he might be somewhere here in the audience. And currently, a, a PhD student of mine is looking at models for water filtration problems. So this is my very short uh, kind of 25-year journey into mathematical modeling, and this is where I am now. And today, I will share with you my experience with uh, just the first item there, because that time, I was just a student, a novice, if you like, at mathematical modeling. And I would sort of look at um, or discuss the kind of uh, struggles that I, have to, I had to um, go through during that, that stage, I have to, okay. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> so this was the project. Uh, <clears throat> it all began with this honors project in the area of mathematical uh, biology. Now, incidentally, when I was a junior college student here in Singapore, uh, 